Bankers don't often attract sympathy, uh, especially after the global financial crisis and a range of other crises. We tend to think that bankers are pretty good at looking after themselves and are pretty tough on others. That said, and there's probably a lot of truth in that actually, but that said, uh, bankers can still find themselves in a very bad position. They can face a real banker's dilemma once they've decided to lend to someone. Presumably they've done all the risk assessment and they've priced the loan to reflect the risk. Suddenly they find themselves with a client in arrears, someone who is uh, not repaying their loan and perhaps their business is in uh, danger of collapse. Similarly, if you uh, buy bonds in a company, Saiken, you're in a similar situation. So you're effectively at a fixed interest rate, taking on risk from the company by providing money to the company in return for a piece of paper called a bond, uh, which guarantees to pay you that interest over a certain period of time. So we do see sometimes a very awkward situation where a company is in danger of collapse or actually does go into a process of bankruptcy. Uh, we have in a lot of countries financial systems that allow a process of administration. It's a legal mechanism that allows the company to continue operating, to keep people employed, to keep providing services to customers, while the fundamental issues of there being more liabilities than assets, of the company being able to continue to operate and to pay money back to people who, who it's owed to. Often in the administration process, the bankers, the bondholders, have to make a compromise. They have to agree to engage in what's called debt forgiveness to simply say, okay, realistically, this company completely fails. We're not going to get our money back at all. So better to compromise and agree on partial debt forgiveness. Uh, we see very recently in Australia, uh, Virgin Airlines Australia, uh, it's gone into administration. People who only a year ago bought bonds, Saiken, from Virgin, now finding that if they're very, very lucky, they'll get back something like nine to 10 cents in the dollar. I'm a shareholder, by the way, in Virgin Australia. I will get absolutely zero. The uh, administration process wipes out uh, all value for shareholders because ultimately the company has more debt than assets at this current point in time. But nonetheless, the idea with administration is that the business is better off continuing for the sake of the customers and the employees. Now, I'm also a customer of Virgin Australia. I have several plane tickets, which obviously I can't use now, but I'm hoping at very least to get travel credits so that if the business survives, I can recover something. I lose nothing, ideally, as a customer through the business continuing. I lose everything as a shareholder. The bankers and the bondholders for that particular company, Virgin Australia, will lose most of their money, but will get at least something back, which is better than the shareholders. I don't think too many people will be crying for bankers, but for the bondholders, uh, give them further thought. In that particular case, there were many what we call retail investors, ordinary people who bought bonds through a regular offer to the public at large, through financial institutions, banks, uh, and whatnot, and suddenly have found themselves losing probably 90% of the capital that they handed out. So banking, finance in general, uh, it's so much about uh, assessing and pricing risk, but those models are imperfect. COVID-19, for example, hit everybody's modeling dramatically. Uh, well beyond the expected realm of risk. And so we do see now a lot of creditors who are owed money are forced to compromise in the interest of keeping businesses alive, particularly in these circumstances, because we do, do hope that there will be a fairly quick recovery. People are talking a V-shaped republic. It might be a re uh, recovery, it be quite a shallow V. Uh, but it does make sense to compromise cut your losses and hope to actually recover something in the longer term by engaging in forgiveness.